everybody. We just wanted to do a quick walkthrough on how to put together a rudimentary uh, CPAP. So in our shop, you're gonna need a few different things and you can get all of this from the respiratory closet. So you need a PEEP valve, which is gonna look like this. You need a viral filter, which is gonna look like this. You need potentially a connector, which is in the BiPAP mask container, and then you need a BVM. So there's a picture that Swami sent out on actually how to put this together, but essentially these are gonna be the fundamentals. The other side of it is gonna be the mask. So in-house we have two different masks, um, which can be a little bit confusing, but essentially they have a size that's written on them, large. You can see that we have medium. And then these are gonna be the new style that almost look like the Envo masks. And then we have our traditional mask, which we're more familiar when we think of like our bypass patients and essentially like the traditional mask size. So how to put it together? This part's easy. So on the bag valve mask on the end, you're gonna see the exhaust port. So for the exhaust port, you're actually gonna remove this piece. You're gonna remove the connector off of the peep valve. And then this is going to fit right on the end. So this is actually gonna provide your end expiratory pressure. And so this is adjustable. So you can go 510 or what, however you wanna put it. So what connects directly to the bag valve mask is going to be your viral filter. And then after the viral filter, it's going to be our mask. So here we have our two different styles and there are some important nuances to these masks. If you look in the bottom, you can see that there is a one-way valve in there. These valves need to be removed because this is how the patient is going to exhale. Uh, and if they can't exhale back into the actual BVM, you can see it here. Some of them actually don't have a valve like this one. Oh, this one does have it. So um, some of them won't have a valve. Just know that if there is a valve in there that you actually have to remove it. So how I do it, I usually grab a pair of Kelly clamps or whatever you want to use. And then you just go in and literally just grab it and then you're going to pull it out. So on this one, it's going to be the same thing. You can either reach in through the mask here. If you can grab it. And you're going to remove the actual valve. Okay, so the valve is out of there now. So the next part, so with the traditional mask, the traditional mask, the viral filter will hook directly up. And this is how your closed system is gonna work. The one other important fact here is you're gonna see that there are exhalation ports here. This is gonna kind of make everything useless unless we cover that. So we usually get a tegaderm and we are going to cover this exhaust port. And then this is gonna be the breathing apparatus. So for the other valve, we've noticed that they don't hook up directly. And in the respiratory closet, there is this adapter. So the adapter will go on here, it'll go on your viral filter, and then you just have it set up. So just know when you use the blue mask, you may have to use this adapter. So the key things are removing the valve that's in the actual BVM mask, covering the exhaust port with a tegaderm, and then using a connector if you have to. Okay, so the final step of this is we have to cover the exhaust port. So we just get a tegaderm. You lay it right over and then you pinch it and then you just wrap it around the sides to make sure that this exhaust port is covered. And it's gonna be the same thing on the other type of mask. You just make sure that this exhaust port is covered. So after we hook this up, what we're gonna do is we are going to hook it up to oxygen. I actually like to take the Christmas tree off because it's actually gonna decrease our flow. Most of the time what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this on flush rate. So we're trying to get the most amount of mean airway pressure that we can. So any sort of device which is going to limit the amount of airflow going into our mock CPAP machine is gonna reduce our mean airway pressure. So what I do is I actually take the Christmas tree off, I'm gonna put it up here, and then we're just gonna to go to flush rate. So flush rate, you just crank it all the way open. So what you'll see is, you'll see that the bag will fill up and we have valves here and we have valves here. So when the patient breathes, we can turn this off now. When the patient breathes, 
They are going to inhale the oxygen, which is coming in through our reservoir, which is going to provide our increased mean airway pressure, which we're trying to accomplish. And when they exhale, they're gonna exhale through this tube and it's actually gonna go out the peak valve. So this is how they develop the actual like end expiratory pressure. And again, this is gonna be adjustable. So this is a good utility when we're out of high flow and when we're out of actual like official CPAP machines. And so essentially this can just buy you a little bit of time until you can develop like definitive management. A lot of times you'll actually be able to turn people around with this and be able to titrate down to a venti mass, you know, kind of like Swami covered when he went through his little talk. So that's all I got for now. Just make sure key things, remove the valve, cover the exhaust port and make sure that you have a nice clean connection. Um, I also did find, I used this on one of my patients, um, this extension here does create increased dead space, which can actually kind of work against you um, when it comes to resuscitating a patient. So a lot of times I find that with this, de this shorter tube size, we get decreased dead space and you'll have better oxygenation with the old mask. So if you can go with the old mask. Um, other than that, if you guys have any questions, reach out to Swami, reach out to like the administrative staff or... Um, Reach out to Belvin, I'm sure anybody would be happy to answer questions.